Hi, everybody. Welcome to Inspiring Adventures. I'm Melissa Reyes, and tonight I have with me my good old friend. I hate to say old, but she's my old friend, yeah. my friend Brooke. Uh, Brooke Schiller. I want to say Brooke Pryor. Brooke Pryor Schiller. <laughs> Welcome, Brooke. How are you? Great. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. And yes, you know me as Brooke Pryor, but I'm now a Schiller. But it's and been a long time, and I'm so happy to see you again <laughs> and engage with you on this platform. Well, thank you so much for being here. So everybody, Brooke uh, is has a business called Insight Partner Consulting. Insight Partners Consulting. Right. And I recently found out that what she does has to do with um, neurology, the brain, and it's, it's all scientific, but it has to also do with the heart and in, in motivating businesses and getting bringing people together. And it all just sounded like my bag. And so um, we had so much more in common than I thought we did. And of course, we kind of reunited over our 30th high school reunion. So isn't that wonderful? I highly encourage everybody to attend the reunion and get to know people. And even though we've been interacting over the years on social media, um, it's really neat to be able to come together and do some business together. So thank you so much for being here, Brooke. My Again. pleasure. <laughs> and why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing, where you are, and I'll do a little bit of housekeeping here and welcome everybody to the show. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. So hi, everybody. My name is Brooke Pryor Schiller. I am based in the San Francisco Bay Area in Los Altos, California, but I was raised in Southern California, and that's where Melissa and I met in school many years ago. Well, she already divulged how many years ago. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, that's okay. It's all good. I'm proud of it. So um, from, from there, from our humble beginnings, I, um, we both went off and pursued our careers, and I have spent mine in the learning and organizational development field. And I spent many years in-house, as I like to say. I started my career out at Gap Inc., so working in retail, and then worked in um, hardware and software and high tech here in Silicon Valley for many years. And about 11, just about 11 years ago, I decided to go out on my own and pursue my own dreams and put out my own shingle. And I call that <laughs> Insight Partners Consulting. I spell it I-N-C-I-T-E because my goal is to really incite action. And mm -hmm. I want to partner with you on that. So uh, that's where the name came from. And um, I've been in business for 11 years and I've done a lot of different things, all focused on human behavior and really digging into what that looks like and the underlying story behind how we show up in the world. And um, it wasn't really till Recently, I would say the last couple of years that I really started delving into this uh, neuroscience space and how it overlays with leadership. Um, my practice has always been focused on leadership and management development and team effectiveness. And now with this neuroscience overlay, I'm really able to not only understand it for myself, but help my clients understand this connection between the brain and the body, the the brain, the heart, and the gut, and how it um, impacts how we show up as leaders. So that's really what I enjoy doing. Well, that is so cool. The brain, the gut, <laughs> it's, all, we, it's all connected, you know, in the, and I, I know that you talk a lot about mindfulness, and I think that's, you know, that's aligning everything, right? So um, what, what, so somebody coming into your business, what what was it? What would it that I guess? What would they be trying to solve, or what would you know? What would their issue be if they were going to be get consulting from you? <laughs> I work with leadership teams. I work with um, what I call intact teams, but teams at all levels that all have a common goal or common purpose. Um, I, and I also work with individuals and I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So it really kind of depends on the need, but typically I get a call when a team or an individual is feeling stuck in some way. There's a challenge before them and they're not quite sure how to do it or maybe 
what they've always done isn't working anymore and they want a thought partner and someone to help them not only think through but put into action new ways of behaving that mm -hmm. will help them you know tackle those new challenges and uh, think in a new and different way and I often call myself an anthropologist I do that in air quotes because I don't have formal training but my motto really is I like to dig deep and put those <laughs> up on the surface and behavior. There's always something else going on underneath. And I like to dig into that and really help people understand that and then draw themes between human behavior. Well, I love that. You know, I don't know if you know this, but when I was in college, I actually really loved taking the um, anthropology class as my science. And, um, and also as a blogger, one of my favorite places to review and to go to is Libraria Tarpets. <laughs> because, oh. you know, I just think that looking into the history of things, that really does relate to our life. If we don't look back and look deep, it's hard to know where we are now. So I'm getting what you're talking about, yeah. I think. Okay. I yeah. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. So, um, you know, as a life coach, I think that that, it's very much um, what I do, and and but just thinking about how you can incorporate that or work incorporate that, you know, help a business. Um, I just think that's really exciting, especially because I'm going into a business with five partners, mm -hmm. and I think um, it's Bubble or Media. A lot of people are having not trouble, but taking time to wrap their minds around how five people from across the country and one abroad can come together and start a business. And there is no one CEO. <laughs> there is no, you know, we're really true partners. We work together and it's like the Brady Bunch starting <laughs> a global company. <laughs> and so, you know, yeah, sometimes our meetings feel like a, um, you know, coaching session, but, and you know, it, it's worth it to us because we're all so passionate about what we're doing. So, um, you know, do, what's, you know, what is some of the things that you w have dealt with with companies like that? Your small partnerships, big partnerships. I mean, what do they all have in common? I guess. Good question. Well, what I what I find about you know how you described what you're doing with your business is actually becoming more and more common. Uh, that is, that's what's happening. That's how teams are formed. And um, through my, my studying neuroscience and leadership, I've been really influenced by the work of Sylvia Damiano and the About My Brain Institute. And one of the main concepts um, in her book and in the leadership work that I've been doing related to it is understanding that, you know, we are, we teams, businesses are shifting from a period that was really based in technology and growth in technology or the information age to what is now becoming the imagination age. Ah, and, I like and ideas are sparked in different ways and teams are formed and then disbanded really quickly. They're not um, as much the hierarchical teams that we were used to seeing. So how we work is changing, how teams are forming and not forming are changing. And I think what you, your example is just, you know, that's a great example of how things are really happening in this day and age. So what I find fascinating is more and more of what you described is happening. Yet, you know, the leadership and um, the leadership and management development field has been around for a long time. And we tend to rely on some of the tried and true methods to solve for 21st century problems or challenges. And um, we find, right. and we ask ourselves why that doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. So with, with this thinking about looking at generational differences, how teams form, the challenges we face in, in a world now where we're doing stuff like this. I mean, just being on this live stream show, I mean, mm -hmm. We never were able to do this before. We're working in a whole new way. So that is really where I try to put my head with any new engagement, any new challenge in a business is helping them understand how, how they work and how that's changing, what the needs will be in the future 
getting them out of thinking about what our, our problems are now and what services mm -hmm. now, but what the needs will be in the future and yeah. how we address those. That's that's pretty cool. So what is the latest with the multi-generational thing? Because I know working at, I have, people must think that I am like work schizophrenic or something because I talk about my live stream business, I talk about my, you know, um, life coaching, but yet I also work at a school, everybody. <laughs> I work in a middle school. And so I have this wonderful resource where I, I get to work among educators and they're every year, you know, they bring in these wonderful, um, um, <clears throat> I don't know, the people who train the educators and they have in services and I get to listen to them and they talk to this to the teachers about how we're teaching our students and I love it. I love it because we work it happens to be the school that that we went to and it's a, a wonderful school that um, really educates these these students to go through college and get careers that are going to be about the future. And so it's interesting to see like in the past 10 years how we've worked on teaching our children um, about the information age and about the what you call the imagination age. Just five years ago, I remember hearing them talking to teachers about how the, these this wave of students are they're going to be the ones who are going to be innovative and and creating things that we hadn't thought about yet. So right. they, you know, your kids are going to be the ones who are going to be making things that you haven't even thought about yet. You know, so how do we teach them? And so how do we manage the generation of people who are going to be running businesses about things that we don't even know about yet. Right, 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 exactly. So so a couple of really good questions embedded within there. And you know, the first thing I I'm sorry. I'm, no, I no, 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 it's great. <laughs> no, it's great because this is all the all this good stuff. But okay. um, you know, thinking about what are the skills that will be needed and how do we figure that out? And then the second part is how do we deal with the, or not deal, but how do we proactively really engage the different generations? And I mean all the generations. So there's a couple great things there. Um, and so I'll start with your, your first question first, you know, around the millennials. And when I talk about this imagination age, um, we're moving from a place where knowledge was power really to now where ideas are power. And when we think about taking that and we apply it to what the needs will be in the future, we're going to be needing people who can tap into their intuition, who can notice the, uh, the environment around them and who can be agile with picking up on cues they're getting, not just from data, but things that their hearts are telling them, their guts are telling them. It's just as good as data and facts. It's, a, it's actually a sixth sense. So intuition is, is one. Um, the, the idea or the notion that ideas will be power, the currency of, of the future, really gets us thinking about inspiration. How do we in, inspire that imagination? How do we pull it out? And one of the things that I often get asked in my practice is, we're kind of lacking in innovation can you do an innovation workshop and by the way you can't do an innovation workshop you need to get people to think and feel and engage in the world differently so those are some of the things i try to do so um, intuition inspiration imagination um, really thinking about ideas and that comes from a place bringing kind of you know the brain back into it but bringing back this notion or just reacquainting ourselves with the notion that we have to have an integrated system and integrated means a couple things it means the left and right brain that I think we are all really familiar with that notion um, and integrating both the left brain and the right brain the analytical side with the feeling side but also integrating our heads and our bodies right we're not disembodied brains and we're not walking around with bodies with no heads right so <laughs> How do we connect those two so we can be the best version of ourselves? So when we're mm -hmm. called upon to be innovative, when we're called upon to, you know, bring your best performance to work, um, to be agile, we can tap into things that are already within us. 
we don't necessarily have to go out and learn a new model. Sorry mm -hmm. for the models of the world, but we can <laughs> tap into things that are already with us. And I think that's so important because What's that um, word? we don't have to go review the paradigm. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, there, there are some great models out there, um, you know, for sure. But I think when we take a good model, um, you know, as I said, I'm inspired by the about my brain leadership model. But when we take that, really, it's talking about where well, you brought one of them up at the beginning of our talk, uh, mindfulness. Yeah. Paying attention, noticing what's happening. And yeah, there's a role for meditation. There's a role for mindfulness, not only in our personal life, but in our work lives. And it's getting to be more important than ever. That's good. I'm glad. I like to. I like it when I'm on track. And you know what? If I'm not on track, then teach me something, and I'm. I want to learn it, and it's exciting to me. So curiosity is another 21st century skill. You just nailed it, right? Yeah, so, right. <laughs> yeah, the ability to ask questions and to go out there and say, you know what? I don't know everything. Help me understand and being open to that. So yeah. just to name a few. That's so neat. That's so neat. What a fascinating business that you have. It's, you know, the business, you're helping people, you're helping businesses, and, um, you know, you're learning and using your brain and your heart. I love it. Yeah. I love well, it. How did you it, get into this? Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. I was, I was just going to start talking about that. So you're intuitive. <laughs> you're paying attention. You're noticing. But, yeah. <laughs> You know, I mentioned in my introduction that I've been doing leadership and management and teamwork for 20 plus years. Uh, but it wasn't I until to mention that Anna is watching here. She's on top of it, too. She's like, oh, isn't she great? Thank you. Anna. I'm seeing her comments, too. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Um, and so while I've been studying leadership and management and teaching this for years, I mm -hmm. I since I've since come to realize that when you live it yourself, when you kind of go through your own journey and you're able to share that with others, then that's really where things start to click in. Mm -hmm. And while I am a facilitator and a corporate trainer and a coach, when I started seeing symptoms of my own malaise in my own life, seeing things in myself about, God, you know, I wish, I wish I could shift that or I just, you know, maybe it's brain fog or maybe I'm just on autopilot. I often show this image in my talks of a brain that um, like on marionette strings. Right. So I kind of feel like that was where I was a couple of years ago. And I'm sitting here thinking I teach this stuff, so I should have all the answers. Right. And I was putting out the persona of having it all together. But when I looked inward and really kind of, paid attention to my own self, I realized I had some things to learn. Mm -hmm. And that's really when it things shifted for me with regard to my business and, and how I talk about leadership. Uh, because I've learned, not all the models, but I've learned a lot of models, <laughs> right, over time. And I teach a lot of models. But when I was able to stop, create some space to tap into my own intuition, all sorts of amazing things happened. Um, I started to sleep better. I started to dream more vividly. Um, I had more energy, um, more optimism. Um, all of these things started to transpire when you just take a moment to notice, okay, what's off? What's out of balance? And I, I use that word again lightly because there's so much talk about work-life balance and balance this and balance that. Yeah. And while I think there's no optimal state of balance, it is important to notice when things are out of whack. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be totally even, but I think thinking about, okay, something's out of whack. Let me pay attention to it and see what I can do to shift things in the right direction. So long story short, I did it for myself. Um, I started at home as I often say with my clients and with, with that learning, I was able to, you know, start telling my story like I you know, am now and sharing it with others. And that tends to turn the lights on more than <laughs> anything I was doing before. Right? I could come in with manuals and books and written facilitator manuals and all that and PowerPoint slides. But telling my story and showing the difference that it made in my life is really, is when things started to move in a real positive direction. 
Telling your own story makes the difference. Yes, it does. Yes, I believe that. We're storytellers, and that's what Inspiring Adventures is about because that's, you know, sharing your story inspires other people to find their passion, live their passion, and find their purpose. And you're setting an example. And even just, you know, pointing out, gives me the chance to point out what, um, what a superstar you are. And if you didn't know that already, you totally are rocking it. Oh. So thank you so much. And then, you know, what? <laughs> what? And back at you. Oh, well, thank you. But, you know, so tell us about your story. What, what happened that, that you shared that made a difference for you? Well, really, it was a little over two years ago, and I was I was actually up in front of a group. I was leading a training session, and I I had what I kind of described as this sort of out of body experience. Like I could I could hear my stick coming out of my mouth. I knew what I was supposed to be saying, and I could hear myself saying it. Like, okay. Hey, Am I just like doing this from memory? Am I really here? You know, am I engaged? I know it sounds kind of weird, but it was the moment where I said, I don't want to be on autopilot and just delivering um, the way I've always delivered. And that combined with just some, some, some personal awakenings, just some, you know, noticing that, uh, you know, tired a lot, as I mentioned, um, what I call brain fog, just, mm -hmm. you know, just feeling sleepy, lethargic, um, not getting enough exercise, I just noticed that I wasn't feeling great. Mm -hmm. And I had begun studying the correlation between neuroscience and leadership about a year prior to that. Mm -hmm. But as they, um, w as they often say, I'm going to mess this up, but something along the lines, when the, when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. Yes. Right? right. So I had been studying it and I thought, oh, well, this will be a good thing to add to my business repertoire, but it wasn't, you know, flash forward until a year later when I started feeling these symptoms that I described to you that I realized, okay, this is speaking to me. Wow. And so right off the bat, I, you know, started, I, I made some major sort of shifts in my life in terms of incorporating an exercise pro, um, practice, a meditation practice, changed um, pretty dramatically things I was eating, um, mm -hmm. things I was, you know, eating, drinking or not, and um, mm -hmm. really made a shift just in terms of what I was consuming and how I was spending my energy. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, I was able to really start, you know, almost immediately see shifts in terms of my, you know, the ideas and the ability and the speed with which they would come to the surface. Um, faced with a challenge and brainstorming, it was no longer tough. Um, but it wasn't until I kind of saw it sort of spilled out in front of me that I noticed, I noticed this in myself. And by making those shifts, my, you know, my imagination really sparked um, memory, memory right there. That's another good one. Um, I really um, started developing techniques. Um, and just by eliminating certain things from my diet and exercise, sleep, meditation was able to influence things like memory as well, which also play into how you show up professionally. So those are just a couple examples. It's so interesting. Now, did people notice the change in you and outward, outward, you know, differences? Do people say, what are you doing, Brooke? You're on top of it. You're on fire. Yes. Whenever you make a shift or shifts like this that are dramatic, um, some things happen, right? People around you notice. And they either are like, I'm curious, tell me more, right, right. or they'll do everything in their power to kind of bring you back in the fold, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's either go or they don't want to have anything to do with it. Or they want to learn, or <laughs> why, why aren't you doing that anymore? I don't yeah. know who you are. So it was a little bit of that, right? And um, I've... I can look back on it now, and you can ask my husband some other time, but he'll say I'm changed. <laughs> he noticed. Um, and he was one of those people that said, you know, go forth and, and continue to do it. But you you, you kind of notice when, you know, who's around me and how do I interact and are they um, 
Are they going to be helpful in me making these changes mm -hmm. or are they going to try to bring me back to the old way? And, you know, I can make a real easy overlay into corporate America. Anytime someone's in a class I'm doing or in a coaching situation, we talk about what happens when you walk out of this room and one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to have a boss or a team that's going to say, yay, let's do this. Or you're going to have people saying, come back to the dark side, right? <laughs> That'll so, never work here. Right, yeah, exactly. yeah. We tried that. It's yeah. been done. And, yeah. you know, that's not necessarily a, an example of 21st century thinking. <laughs> so the more we can, um, the more the more I get to work with teams on this and um, actually change with teams, I think that's really where the traction starts. Um, and, you know, speaking of inciting action, it happens when teams can learn together because then they can all go back and support each other. And so that's kind of the correlation I you know, make between my own personal journey and how I bring it into the workspace. Well, I, I feel like I've experienced a similar awakening but didn't realize that that's what it was um, when I did a year in bloom. Um, it started with people saying to me, um, you're emerging this was a couple years back there. They noticed that I was blooming as a woman or I was coming f fully into wisdom, different ways of putting it. Right. And I felt really empowered and I thought I need to do something with this. And so I had been choosing words to be my theme for the year as a practice of mindfulness for about five years. And previously it was, I went through a, a, a phase of discovery where I wanted to learn a lot of things. I went through a phase of experience where I wanted to spend time with people in the moment. I went through, you know, different phases. Well, this year I wanted to bloom and well, last year was sparkle. That was fun. I just felt yeah. like showing off. <laughs> so but this year I wanted to bloom. And in that it was about growing and thriving and my goals were very simple. It was to be my healthiest, happiest, and best self. Mm -hmm. And I'm halfway through the year and people are like asking me, what are you doing? And I do feel healthier. I do feel happier. And I do feel like smarter. <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm remembering things and I'm, I'm more everything is falling into place okay you know so maybe i'm not wealthier so next year i might add that to my list but i'm gonna get there because i'm very um motivated right but last year i was in pain i was sparkling and happy and everything but i was in a lot of pain i was in a lot of you know in flux and so it's a matter of putting you know making that connection that awakening you know, yeah. and just doing it. But I, but I didn't ha to have that, I guess, th the teacher in front of me was just a different teacher with the different words and different things, but basically yeah. the same idea, but more on a personal level. So it's exciting for me to hear it described in a business level because that's where I'm at now. So yeah. you're my teacher. <laughs> well, oh, oh, sorry. I was just going yeah, to piggyback on what you said that, um, you know, I'm going to date myself, but you know how old I am. So I'm going to go way <laughs> back to the days in the work world where people would say, leave your personal life at the door. Yes, that's what like, we grew you, Like you separate, could do Everything separate. Right? Right. And, and you what never we cried, now, you never shared. Yeah. Right, right. And what we know now is that, first of all, we can't do that. And second of all, why would we want to do that? Why okay. are we asking people to leave part of themselves outside? We are whole human beings. And I often use the metaphor of, of the moon and the phases of the moon. You know, the moon, the whole moon okay. is always there. But you, depending on where the other planets and we all are aligned, you see parts of it. Right. It's awesome. I've never thought of it that way. Well, so is that what 21st century thinking is? Well, I think 21st century of a thing. whole person and yes, I, yes. And so I, I get asked and I mentioned one or two of these before, but I get asked a lot for how do we improve performance? How do we increase collaboration? We need to be more agile. We need to be more innovative. Those are 21st century skills. 
but yet we're applying old school ways to do that. Like put them in a class, give them a book and hope it works out. Mm. So 20, 21st century thinking are, you know, are really some simple competencies within the inspiration, imagination, intuition, and integration. You go in beneath that and I'll use the leave your, leave your personal life at the door, right? The integration mm -hmm. as an example. So when we bring our whole selves to work, when we're allowed to bring our whole selves to work and be our best selves mm -hmm. at work, um, that is right there in and of itself, 21st century thinking, because people are saying, yeah, bring, your, bring all of you in. Bring in um, the learning that you're getting from maybe uh, the baseball field or the philanthropy that you're part of or whatever you have going on out there, bring it in, perhaps, there's another way to think about this challenge that we could learn from this venue or that venue. Mm -hmm. So, you know, bringing our, our whole selves in is, mm -hmm. it's a new way of thinking. Um, and it requires that we put away some of the preconceived notions that we have about what's, what's acceptable um, in, in the workplace. Now, I'm not saying pouring your heart out all the time and wearing your heart mm -hmm. on your sleeve. But I think looking um, Some more things are so sacred. You know, you don't want to be like, you know, having your dirty laundry out there, but sharing the course. best things about yourself. You know, right. you right. can work next to somebody and never know these amazing things about them because uh -huh. they're so private. And right. not that, you know, some people are private. That's not what I'm talking about. But where you think, gosh, if I known that, we could have, you know, yeah, that could have been yeah. amazing. Yeah, <laughs> so that's right. Cool. Yeah, that's, and so you know that's one example with the with the integration and and how it leads okay. to performance. Um, there are lots like that, but another one that I I'm really excited about is you know thinking about generating new ideas. Um, and mm. so generating new ideas doesn't come from saying, "Hey, just go out and think about that differently." You've got to train people and teach people to do it. So Perhaps you take a typical analytical task, right? Um, and you ask people to do it or to solve it only with their feeling side of their brain, thinking about how they would collaborate on it, how they would notice the uh, dynamic in the room and how they would solve the challenge. Those are just examples of activities, hands-on activities that I get to do with people to help them you know, crack the code on some of these age old challenges um, that people keep facing. And if you just keep, uh, you know, applying the same methods, it's like hitting your head against a wall, right? You're going right. to get results. But how do we really kind of crack it open and think about things differently from a new vantage point? That, you know, someone needs to lead the way and you're doing that. So, you know, my bad for not bringing this up sooner, but how does somebody get in touch with you, Brooke? It's at Insight Partner, uh, Partners, Partner, Insight Partner on Twitter. And then the website is at Insight Partners. It's, it's Insight Partner, single. So I N C I T. Yeah. Partner. Okay. okay. So think of it like I'm your Insight Partner. Yeah. Dot com. Dot com. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like that. Yeah, that's okay, great. Right. Right. And pretty much the same on, on Twitter. And I have um, a dedicated business Facebook page. And I really try to be active on there. Just um, I, I like to look for quotes and articles that I think are, are meaningful. And I have a steady stream of those going on. And I, it also shows kind of where I'm at, where I'm speaking. You, when you go to the website, you can sign up for Brooke's email list and you can get a newsletter too. So that's exciting. I can't wait to see what you put out from there. And then I guess that if you're going to be at a um, someplace where we can see you speak, we can go to that. So what do you, what, what kind of yeah. insights would you offer for women? I'm, I'm going to be writing an article about women in, live stream and you know it really goes for women in business and leadership in roles you know what what type of inspiration do you have for women right now in business not that we're any better better or special than anybody else but you know i'm a woman so <laughs> yeah i think it's fair to, to focus there yeah. well 
Okay, so I I'll be try. I'll be totally honest. I as I've done tonight, I've talked a lot about intuition. And you know, when we think about the left brain and the right brain, um, what we're talking about here are skills that I think traditionally have been sort of in the female wheelhouse, right? So the ability to, to notice and to, and to tap in um, to that. However, historically for women coming up and becoming leaders, you, you may have noticed this, you hit a wall. Um, when you bring your natural ability to use your intuition or use words like feel, or you talk about going from your gut, Sometimes there's an adverse reaction. And what, what I would say in terms of advice for women is that this is really going to be what, what sets us apart, not just, not just as women. I think men really need to also pay attention to the fact that they've got intuition and they have to tap into it, and it's not a bad word. I go. think just, <laughs> just between you and me and your viewers, I think as women we have a little bit of a leg up if we, <laughs> if we pay attention to it. But we all have it, and um, the idea that men don't have it, or there's something, there's a stigma associated with it, is really something we need to change. Um, and I think women can be on the forefront of that. And I would continue to um, recommend that and give that advice to women who are advancing in their careers and want to be ahead um, and be able to foresee what's coming down the pipe. I love it. Thank you so much, Brooke. And can you believe it's been 40, 45 minutes? We, you know, I told you the time goes by really fast. <laughs> and I want to thank oh, wow. everybody. I know I want, I could talk to you forever. And I mean, we could, we could continue, but I need to wrap things up. So, um, thank you so much for that wonderful advice. I love that intuition is where it's at right now. I think that everybody does, as, you know, everybody does have that instinct and that ability to to you know just tap into that thank you so much um anna and cindy and cheryl and everybody who came in tonight thank you for watching the replay if you're watching this um you weren't with us live i really appreciate you being here we'll connect with you in the comments if you have a question just tag brooke or myself and we'll make sure to get back to you and um be sure to um connect with brooke at insight partner at Insight Partners Consulting on Facebook and um, or just, you know, at Insight Partner at um, Twitter. She's really, really active on social media, which is exciting. That's how come we connected. So I look forward to um, seeing all of your comments. Brooke, any party, parting words <laughs> as we wrap it up tonight? Well, I think really, I just wanted to say thank you to you, Melissa, for making this happen and to your, your viewers for engaging in the conversation. Um, this is a revolution. This is something that is, is a new way of thinking. And I really want to continue the conversation. I want to um, engage people's curiosity, ask questions, be curious about what's going on with your, your neighbor and your colleagues. And keep open dialogue. So um, for anyone who's made comments tonight, I'd be happy to, to follow up with you and really want to just send that message as we part this evening. Yes. Keep an open dialogue. That's wonderful. Just, you know, be yourself. Ask questions. I love that curiosity part. You know, it's okay. So key. Yeah. 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 All right. If you don't know, ask. That's what I like to say. So thank you, everybody, for sharing the links, and we'll get back to you. And again, um, this has been a wonderful conversation discussion about leadership and the brain-gut connection with Brooke Pryor Schiller of Insight Partners here on Inspiring Adventures. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.